Hi guys, so today we're going to be fitting the VFD to my lathe um, or everything we didn't do last week basically uh, I need to also cut a vent hole in the back box which someone kindly pointed out to me um, I completely overlooked that to be fair so yeah, we'll do that, we'll get on with that and let's, uh, let's see how it all goes So this probably looks a little bit messy but it's quite straightforward This brown wire and these three black wires they are going to. That will be for the signal wires there for the uh, for, for the RPM monitor. But I need to sort that out in a minute. So I'll leave that there. But everything else is connected. So this is the the light here is 230 volt or 220 volt. But so that's the only thing that's running sort of um, higher power. The rest of it, everything's low power. I've got all the. All the blacks here, other than those three, as I say, they're all signal wire. Uh, these are all com wires, so I've just connected the, them all up across the bottom, including to the potentiometer there. Uh, the two black wires, the other black wires there are the signal wires for the potentiometer. Well, one of them's a 5 volt feed, and the other one's um, the signal wire. Um, these are forward and reverse from the jog function, and the blue one there is the emergency spark. So, other than this one blue wire, every blue wire is just for the emergency stops there, so it just makes it sort of easier to identify later on. But now that's done, because I'm leaving this for a little bit, I'm going to put that back on now. So it's probably not right to do it like this, but I've used two Wagos there and ferreled each of the wire ends there. They will go into there. One of them, this one here, which is all blue, is for the is for the emergency stops and that one is for the uh, comms line so it connects all the comms through all of the switches so yeah it's all connected up and it's fine this is ready to go back on now which I'll do in a second and then I can connect all of these wires then into the into the back of the sort of control board area So it's upside down for what I've written, but I've earthed this box here, the the bit that holds the VFD, that's earthed as well. Then what I've done in this, it's probably going to be hard to see, but I used a, um, a die grinder thing in there, and I've just sort of taken the material down on this, there's like a lip, like the top one there, where my thumb is. I've taken that down so I can get this gland on there because I don't really want the cable rubbing on anything. So now I'm going to put this on and that's the power feed done. So the power feed's all in now. As I said before, the earth, this back box is earth. I've cut a vent hole here for the, um, just to allow the VFD to vent a little bit. The Where the cable comes in there is a gland over there as well. So now I can put this box back in. So I've left these two eyes long because I can't remember which way round they go. But And this one here is the feed for the RPM monitor. But other than that it's all connected up and then once it's, once I check which way round these go, if they're the right or not, I'll take it out, shorten them like the rest and then crim um, cable tie it all together neatly. But yeah, it looks a little bit messy but that's almost done now. So now we'll put this back in the hole and we can test it. So please excuse the mess, but as you can see I've got it powered on. The RPM uh, screen is not, not wired in yet, so that's why that's not on. But I got the motor wired up there. Luckily the cables are just long enough to go outside of the lathe so I could wire it up easily rather than being wedged in the hole there. But yeah, I've got the forward and reverse lever works as it should. Oops. The on and off works as it should. That's the other way, obviously. The potentiometer works as it should. The kill switch. That works. And you have to turn it. You you can't just release it to to turn it back on you have to turn that off and turn that back on again and then also the jog function works 
What's nice about that is when I turn that right, it turns it in the same direction as when this is turned right there, which I think is forward in that direction. And then obviously that would be reverse, and that would be reverse. So now all I need to do is put the covers back on, wire that RPM monitor in, and put the motor back in. I also have a new belt turning up, but that won't be in until next week, but I want to just try and get it running today with the old belt, uh, if I can find something to repin it together. But yeah, other than that, it's, the wiring's all done, ready to go back together. Just to show how neatly I've got it all organised, I use my flush cutting cable tie cutter, put some cable ties around these bundles, just hold them all together neatly. Everything's done with ferrules. Yeah, looks great. So, quite pleased with that. This can go in for the final time now. And then I can just wire the top bit up. Everything this morning was going so swimmingly until I tripped over the ferrule box. And now I have about 1,000 ferrule pickup to play for probably the next hour, I'd assume. Christ's sake. What are you? An idiot sandwich. So I've got the old belt back on, obviously. I'm just waiting for the new one to turn up, but it'll be after this video is posted, so I'll put that on myself. But I put this belt on temporarily. The readout for the, or the, um, the sensor for the RPM gauge, you can see that little bundle of wire in the middle of the screen there. That, it's just temporary until I get the new belt and um, once I've got the new belt I'll just make sure it doesn't need um, it doesn't need any like uh, adjusters put on it because this one actually once taut is, is fine so once I have done that what I'm going to do is tag it to the back of this I've got some some nice cable ties with little clips that go into holes so I'll drill a couple of holes down there and mount that Other than the other than the RPM readout as well, it's it's all done then. Um, the the RPM readout I can't get working because of, I overlooked the fact that the feed for it that I was taking off of the VFD is 12 volt AC rather than DC. So I'll sort that out for the well. It will just be working in the future. I'll wire that in. So as soon as I can get that sorted, I will. And then yeah. But I'll just show you it working. Where is it? Here. Send it. Oh, f Oh, I know why. I put the sensor thing on. Let's try that again. What the f is going on here? Let's try that again. Send it. Just gonna send it. So a lot of the noise there was these these gears rub rubbing together very slightly. I need to make some spaces for them, or some better spaces. It's just literally rubbing there, so it's creating a bit of noise. But other than that, it's all sorted. I will also mention that I had to... I've just put an Allen key there in the safety switch just to keep it open, just so I could get it working and get the belt lined up. But yeah, it's so it's all good. I'll put the cover on now and then it's done, ready to use. So I hope you've enjoyed the video series or the two videos on my lathe. I know I haven't finished it fully but you don't really need to see a belt being changed uh, and I'll, I'll do the 12 volt AC to DC conversion 
for the RPM readout. I'll do that sort of just another time when I can sort that out. But let's say other than that, it's all sorted. Um, the my next sort of plan with this thing is to I need to change the oil in it. Um, I'm going to clean the sight glass as well because it's sort of sludged up. You can't really see it. So I'll change the oil. I'm going to take all the saddle and everything apart and clean that all out. Um, then I'm going to put it on, uh, make a new a new bolt for the for my Dixon tool post that I've got, and then I'll fit that to it. So if you care to see that in another video, I might show that. But um, yeah, that that'll be it for this one really. So like and subscribe and comment and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching.